After the ridiculous success of the Huawei P9, the company has now just announced a brand new phone that is bigger, better, and even more badass. Welcome to the Mate 9. For the first time in history, Huawei has finally priced its phones competitively against the ultra high-end flagships, phones like the S7 Edge, phones like the HTC 10. And I'm happy to say that for the most part, the phone manages to hold its own, if not even beating its competitors. So let's start with the way it's built. The Mate 9 is far from a standard phone when it comes to its dimensions. It's got a screen size of 5.9 inches, and that means that it actually has quite a large body. It's thicker and heavier than you'd probably expect most flagship smartphones to be, but it's not unbearable. It's got a nice curvature, kind of reminiscent of phones like the LG G4. The colours are implemented really well, and it feels sturdy, solid, and very durable the whole way around. In terms of the software, it's pretty much been redesigned. With MUI 5.0, Huawei has really made an effort to try and streamline the whole operating system. They've had a lot of criticism in the past, and you can tell they've taken it on board. We're running Android 7.0, and yes, whilst this is probably as far as you can get from a stock ROM, I don't hate it. I mean, to be honest, I would have preferred stock Android, but it's not terrible. Huawei has really made strides in the right direction. The animations are slick, and everything happens at a really fast pace. On top of that, they built in some really cool features, things like App Twin being able to run two Facebook accounts at the same time, and being able to access a private space on your phone just by swiping your fingerprint. Now, the Huawei Mate 9 innovates in so many ways. It's a beautiful phone with tons going for it. But if there's going to be one sticking point, it's probably going to be the screen resolution. With a 5.9 inch size and a resolution of 1080p, we're only topping out at 373 ppi. It's not unsharp, but it does pale in comparison when compared to the S7 Edge. Colours are vibrant and the viewing angles are good, but that resolution just doesn't quite cut it. Flipping over to the hardware though, and it's a different story altogether. Powered by 4GB of RAM and the brand new in-house Kirin 960, this thing is really fast. And it doesn't end there. The Huawei Mate 9 is one of the most intelligent Android smartphones to date. It predicts your behavior. It prevents fragmentation, which means that not only is it born fast, but it stays fast. Apps open up instantly, faster than any other phone I've really tried. It also destroys benchmarks. Not only does it do fantastic in Antutu, but it tops out as the number one smartphone on Geekbench 4.0. On top of that, with the Kirin 960, the GPU performance has improved by over 150% compared to the last generation, so gaming is very fluid. Having said that, every now and again, whilst it is powerful and this is probably not limited by the GPU itself, things do tend to stutter. So it's a great gaming phone, but I wouldn't say this is the ultimate go-to device. Now, whilst there are a lot of things to be excited about with the Mate 9, arguably the most important new feature is its camera. Whilst it does have a similar setup to the Huawei P9, there is a lot of innovation going on here. This is an exciting camera that lets you do interesting things. The photos are detailed, and Leica has an option for vivid colours, which kind of gives your photos a cinematic look to them, which I thoroughly recommend you use. If you do prefer a more natural look, there are options for that. And more importantly, there's a manual control pro mode, which has a similar feature set to the one seen on the LG G5, which was impressive. Now, having two cameras on there does have a number of benefits. To start with, you can actually do something which looks and feels like optical zoom. It's not quite optical, you do lose a little bit of quality, but nonetheless, the pictures still look great. But you can also take photos in what is known as wide aperture mode, and this gives your photos an almost unrealistic amount of blur. Whilst it can fail sometimes, and it can look a bit unrealistic, in some situations, it can make it look like your photo was taken by a DSLR camera. It also lets you do some cool stuff like refocus your photo after you've taken it, and maybe make the background black and white. At 8 megapixels, the front camera was quite impressive too. It's sharp and colourful with a decent amount of punch to it. In terms of audio, Huawei's done something quite interesting. Whilst the inbuilt DAC is nothing to run home about, it's actually got two speakers. It uses one on the bottom, which is emphasised on bass, and then one on the top, the same speaker you use to call people to give you some extra treble, and it creates a nice immersive effect. Now the battery on the Mate 9 is astounding. Not only is the capacity 4000 mAh, but with the new chipset, it's more efficient than ever. This thing can actually last you two and a half days if you don't use it particularly much, and even on a heavy usage, you can get through a day and a half. It's thoroughly impressive. What's also nice is that it has a nice, solid 64GB of internal storage, with room for another SD card. And the fingerprint scanner with 4th generation security works surprisingly fast. So there we go guys, that is the Huawei Mate 9. And this phone is almost an embodiment of how far the company's come. From competing on price alone, just making cheap phones, the company is now innovating left, right and centre in terms of hardware, in terms of software, and is making truly groundbreaking features. 
No, on one hand, the Mate 9 doesn't have the best screen resolution. No, it doesn't have the best looking software. But you can't deny that the Mate 9 is breaking new ground when it comes to its camera, its battery, its performance, and it's exciting in a time when the smartphone market seemed to be stagnating. Overall, the Mate 9 gets a huge thumbs up from me. I'm going to go with a detailed camera comparison, and I'll also follow up with a review after about another few weeks of using it. With that being said, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.